I thank the American Chamber of Commerce, Guyana, for the kind invitation extended to me to participate in this, its second annual general meeting. Annual general meetings are an obligatory requirement of membership organizations. They allow you, the members, to assess the stewardship of your executive, to review the organization's activities over the preceding year, and to learn of its plans for the upcoming year. At a political level, we also engage in introspection and advanced planning. Today, I propose to be forward-looking about the prospects for Guyana's business development. Businesses are the lifeline of any economy. In order for economic wealth to be distributed, and to be distributed more equitably, that wealth first has to be created. You cannot distribute what you do not have. If the economic pie does not grow, then there will be less to distribute. The larger the economic pie, the more there will be to share. If the economy contracts and businesses activity shrinks, the less there will be to distribute. My government unapologetically and unambiguously supports business development. My administration will not be neglectful or indifferent towards business. We will ensure a robust business environment in order to sustainably generate wealth and create jobs. Today, I wish to outline our program for business development. This program is not exhaustive. It is predicated on creating a more conducive business environment for business development by strengthening democracy, ensuring greater ease of doing business, improving national competitiveness, facilitating market access, supporting small businesses development, protecting consumers, expanding and modernizing business infrastructure, and importantly, ensuring that businesses operate in a safe environment. The first element of the program involves strengthening the country's democratic framework. Democracy is vitally important to national development and to providing comfort to investors that there is respect for the rule of law and thus their investment would not be subject to capricious actions. The absence of democracy creates unfair playing fields, clientism, predatory business practices, and corruption. On the other hand, a strong relationship exists between democratic institutions and economic freedom. The latter fosters legitimate business activity and promotes investors' confidence. We are therefore keen to ensure that democracy is protected so that our businesses can thrive in an environment of economic freedom. Amsham Guyana has been in the forefront in supporting constitutional rule and democracy. Following the landmark judgments by Guyana's High Court and the Caribbean Court of Justice relating to the no-confidence motion, Amsham took the moral high ground by urging respect for these rulings. Amsham was not prepared to only shout from the sidelines. It assumed the role of a democratic watchdog by becoming an observer for the general and regional elections of the 2nd of March, 2020. We're living today in more optimistic times because democracy triumphed. We must continue to protect democracy and constitutional rule so as to guarantee a more business-friendly environment. The second element of my government's business development program aims at improving the ease of doing business. The PAP Civic Administration have traditionally progressively improved the ease of doing business. The World Bank's Ease of Doing Business 2020 report, however, notes that Guyana slipped two slots in its ranking for 2019, relative to 2014. Among the problems areas identify were the processing of construction permits, registration of property, and the payment of taxes. The Ministry of Tourism, Industry, and Commerce will spearhead policies to reverse this slippage and to allow the country to climb the rankings. Given that many of the issues concerned with the ease of doing business encompass elements outside of its purview, the Ministry of Tourism, Industry and Commerce will collaborate with other ministries and agencies to streamline procedures which impact on business development. These include procedures relating to business startups, the payment of taxes, obtaining electricity and approving construction permits. Trade facilitation is another area which will receive the Ministry's attention. Delays in customs clearance increase costs and reduce export competitiveness. As such, we will be implementing an electronic single window for trade, which will reduce time and costs, to simplify trade procedures, and eliminate duplication and redundancy. Instead of an importer, for example, 
having to visit six agencies for permits and approvals, all the documentation will be submitted at a single window. And this will then be shared with the various agencies. We'll also be seeking to ensure that investors' applications and requests are facilitated more promptly. As part of our agenda to improve ease of doing business, the Guyana Office for Investment is being restructured as a vehicle to attract and facilitate investment and export promotion. Businesses need a safe and secure environment. We recognize the need to improve public security. We have begun to strengthen the capacity of the Guyana Police Force to combat crime, improving the capacity of the Guyana Revenue Authority to arrest contraband smuggling. My government will work with the private sector in developing an anti-crime plan aimed to better protecting the business community and citizens. The third element of our program to improve the business climate involves enhancing the competitiveness of local businesses. Through the National Quality Infrastructure Project, the government will create a catalyst for competitiveness and increase global market access. The NQI aims to improve the quality of local products and services, thereby stimulating greater demand. The implementation of the NQI will bolster the ability of local business to engage in global trade and increase their competitiveness therein. The liberalization of the telecommunications sector has boosted competitiveness. Already the cost of overseas telephone calls and bandwidth have begun to be reduced. With increased investment and competition in the sector, we anticipate greater competitive gains. The Ministry of Tourism, Industry and Commerce is currently engaging key stakeholders on the promulgation of an electronic transaction and communication bill. The bill is expected to provide the requisite facilitation and regulation of secure electronic communications and transaction and for their legal recognition. These efforts are in addition the cost-cutting and competitiveness-boosting measures announced in the 2020 budget. Businesses will benefit from the removal and reduction of several taxes and fees, such as elimination of VAT on water and electricity, exports, building and construction materials, and hinterland travel. These measures effectively put more money back into all businesses, large, medium, or small, allowing them to reinvest, grow, and create additional employment while simultaneously attracting new companies to our shores. Additionally, we'll establish a National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Council. This body will radically reform the culture of entrepreneurship and encourage the emergence of new entrepreneurs while supporting existing ones. The fourth element of our program for ensuring a more conducive business climate relates to our trade policy. Trade is an essential vehicle for energizing and expanding an economy. Given the size and structure of Guyana's economy, there is an increased reliance on exports. This carries both attendant risks and opportunities. In recognition of the importance of trade in promoting economic growth and building economic resilience, we are revising through a consultative process the draft national trade strategy. The principal objective of our proposed trade strategy is to support competitiveness and diversification through the dismantling of barriers to competition, both domestic and foreign, and to secure Guyana's best interests in trade agreements with external countries and groupings. We'll continue to work to unlock new markets for our traditional exports, including rice, sugar, bauxite, and timber. At the same time, we will seek opportunities for new products, services, and industries. Fifthly, our program for enhancing the business environment concerns the small businesses sector. I am pleased to note that the membership of Amsham Guyana involves both large, medium, and small-scale businesses. Small businesses are indispensable to economic development. Small businesses represent the arms and legs of our economy, propelling us forward, sustaining employment, and acting as vital cogs in the distribution, marketing, and consumption of goods and services of large businesses. Small businesses have taken a serious hit as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. This makes it all the more imperative that they should be supported. My government will table to the National Assembly a small business amendment bill. The bill will expand the range of procurement opportunities so small businesses. Small businesses that provide small scale infrastructure works 
will now be able to functionally benefit from government procurement. The government has also answered the plea of small business owners for increased access to finance. The maximum threshold for grants disbursed by the Small Business Bureau through the Small Business Development Fund has been increased by 100%. Further, the government will continue to vigorously pursue other avenues for increasing small businesses' access to finance. The Ministry of Tourism, Industry and Commerce will engage the relevant financial stakeholders, including commercial banks, microcredit financing institutions, and international development partners in order to expand the resource envelope available for small businesses. In addition, the government will soon complete and commission business incubators at Belvedere in the East Barbies Quarantine region and let them in the Upper Takutu, Upper Eskibo region. Other similar facilities to be developed will provide budding and aspiring entrepreneurs with opportunity to hone their skills needed to become successful. The sixth element of our program for enhancing the business climate encompasses consumer protection. Consumers are an integral part of the business ecosystem. Without the consumer, businesses will flounder. My government is committed to providing greater protection to consumers. A proposed higher purchase bill will provide much needed protection for consumers who procure items on credit or through their higher purchase arrangements. Currently, the law as constituted provides that once a consumer defaults on a single payment, the owner is entitled to forfeit all the previous payments and to repossess the item. This can hardly be fair to the consumer. The bill will reform this unconscionable practice. The seventh element of our program to improve the country's business climate involves the development of business infrastructure. We are committed to stimulating business development nationwide. We want business opportunities throughout Guyana and not solely concentrated in one or two regions. We want to see industries being developed throughout Guyana. As such, we have a plan to establish industrial estates, ICT parks, and export zones to stimulate manufacturing and increase trade. We'll give preference to manufacturers and technology services for occupancy in these estate zones and park. In expanding the opportunity for businesses, the government will be implementing a transformative infrastructure agenda. As I have alluded previously, we are going to transform the country's transportation network. A new bypass between Diamond and Ogo will be built with connections to Mocha, Eccles, and Providence. A high-level bridge will be constructed across the Damara River and will be connected to its westernmost extremity to a new four-lane highway leading to Purica. The private sector will be required to use this opportunity to build capacity, to capitalize on the other massive long-term transformative project in the pipeline, such as Amylas Falls Hydroelectric Project, a deep water harbor, and our weather road linking Linden and Lethem, the Purica to Rockstone Del Conte Road with connections to Bartica and a bridge across the Quarantine River. These are only a few examples of the transformative agenda that we'll be pursuing. A lot of this agenda must be financed and we'll be targeting international financing opportunities. And here lies a great opportunity for synergy between large scale American businesses and, local, and our local private sector. The emergence of oil and gas represents a huge economic opportunity for our country. The levels of investment which are taking place and which are projected in the future will generate massive business opportunities and a demand for human resource skills. We're determined to ensure that local business benefit from business opportunities, particularly in our oil and gas sector. I've already appointed an advisory committee to examine and propose ways in which we can ensure that local businesses benefit from the business opportunities spawned by the oil and gas sector. Local content legislation will be implemented to allow local farms and companies get a greater share of opportunities in the oil and gas sector. We're also determined to secure greater and better job opportunities for young people in oil and gas. My government has promised will train thousands of Guyanese to create a highly skilled and qualified workforce for employment within the oil and gas sector. My government is also seeking to ensure energy security 
cheap and reliable energy is critical to business competitiveness. High energy costs has impacted adversely on local business expansion. My government has a plan to solve this problem. A number of new energy projects are in the pipeline. I am slated within the next few weeks to address the Guyana Manufacturing and Services Association. I will use that opportunity to comprehensively outline my government's energy plan. Within the next five years, Ghana will be energy secure. We will be generating sufficient energy to meet peak demand. But more importantly, businesses will enjoy a boom because we anticipate that the cost of energy will be slashed by 50%. We have a long-term plan for business development. This plan aims to ensure an enabling environment for business activity. We are fashioning a conducive business climate by your commitment to the rule of law and democracy, improving the cost of doing business, enhancing national competitiveness, facilitating trade and investment, supporting small businesses, protecting consumers, and establishing infrastructure which supports business development. I look forward to working with the American Chamber of Commerce, Guyana, to propel this program. I'm open to meeting with the business community because I believe that business is good for our people and for the country's development. I therefore wish every success to this, the second annual general meeting of the American Chamber of Commerce. I look forward to the Chamber's instrumentality in enhancing investment, trade, industry, and commerce in our country. I thank you. God bless you.